Welcome to the Access Web Express YouTube channel. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Videos will be added regularly and you're not going to want to miss it. Welcome to the first in a five part series on how to become a better, more efficient programmer. Today's video is number one setup of a tool database or library with speeds, feeds, step down, and step overs. I would estimate that some of you spend approximately one week, that's one week per year, adjusting speeds, feeds, and step overs for cutters that could be set once and never adjusted again. Let's take a look at one way this could be accomplished during your day-to-day -day programming inside of Mastercam. Here's a fairly simple part file that I have open. Um, I've already got my mill default that I brought in and uh, my stock setup is done. I do want to point out in my tool settings, I have assigned tool number sequentially turned off and I have warn of duplicate tool numbers turned on and use tools step, pec, and coolant turned on as well. So we're gonna do a face tool path. I don't have to select the geometry because I've done the stock setup. I'm going to go grab a face mill from my tool library. In this case, I'm using the mill inch tool database, which is the default database that comes with your Mastercam install. I'm going to grab a two inch face mill, hit the green check mark. And if I look at this, my speed and feeds aren't correct. Just about every tool, and I, I would almost go as far as to say every tool that you open from the mill inch tool library, your speeds and feeds are going to be wrong. So I'm going to set this. So it's, I could set it over here to the right. And if I do that, those speeds and feeds will apply for this tool path only. They're not linked to the tool, and they're not linked to any tool library. So what I want to do when I bring in a tool for the first time is select the tool, right click on it, and say edit tool. And I'm going to change some things here. The, the geometry of the tool I don't need to change. So I'm going to go next. I do need to change the tool number. I set this up not to bring them in sequentially because my face mill on this particular machine or in this library that I'm about to create is always tool 10. So I'm going to set that to 10. I'm then going to set my speeds and feeds. You can do this by spindle speed and feed rate. You can also do it by surface feet per minute and feed per tooth. I'm going to set this to 1250 RPMs with a feed rate of 50 inches per minute. I'm going to set my plunge rate to 40. I'm going to set my, my retract rate if I decide to use a uh, speed instead of a rapid move. To 200 inches a minute. Two inch face mill, I don't really need to change the name of it, but I indeed could. And I'm going to say finish. Notice when I do change that, my numbers over here change, which is exactly what I want. Cut parameters, zigzag, cut it to zero, high speed loops, everything here is set good. I'm going to green check mark that. So to machine the rest of this, I'm going to do a dynamic mill in my 2D dialog. My machining regions, I'm going to go ahead and select. My avoidance regions, I'm going to go ahead and select. And green check mark that. And I'm going to go grab a half inch bullnose end mill with a 31 rad. Again, you can see when I bring this in. Not only are my speeds and feeds not correct, my tool number is not correct. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to select Edit Tool. Again, the tool geometry is perfect. I'm going to select Next. This tool on my machine is always tool number five. So we're going to set that to five. This time I'm going to program this one using my surface feet per minute of 650 and a feed per tooth of four and a half thousandths. And that's going to give me a spindle speed and a feed rate. Change my plunge rate, change my retract rate. And for this, I'm going to go over here where it says milling. I can decide what kind of tool this is. Is it a roughing tool or is it a finish tool? In this case, I can use this for both. So I'm going to leave them both checked. And I'm going to give it a percentage 
for my rough step over. So anytime I use this tool path, I want it to step over 10% when I'm in a roughing mode. My Z step in a roughing mode is going to be 100%. My finish step over for X and Y and Z, I'm going to make it the same. I typically like to leave 10 thousandths, so that would be a step of 2%. Again, I could change the name up here, but I'm going to select finish tool with the correct speeds and feeds. And if I go into the cut parameters for this tool path, you see my step over is correct. So I just need to set my uh, linking parameters. I'm gonna set my depth. All of those look good. We're gonna go ahead and put a clearance in of one inch. Green check mark. Take a second, there's my tool path. Let's take a look at these holes. I'm gonna drill them. Okay. I'm going to zoom in so I can make the selection process easier. I'm going to select those holes. I'm going to green check mark, and I'm going to go grab a half inch spot drill. There's my half inch spot drill. Again, I'm going to right click on that spot drill, and I'm going to select Edit Tool. The size is OK. I'm going to go to Next. My spot drills. I have set up in tools six, seven, and eight. This one happens to be number eight. I've got three different sizes that I will use from time to time. Uh, gonna go ahead and again, this time I'm gonna use spindle speed again. And I typically would run this at 1250 RPMs with a feed rate of four inches per minute. Plunge rate. 40 inches a minute and retract rate of 200. That plunge rate is not how fast I'm plunging into stock, by the way. Uh, notice over here to the right, instead of milling, now it says drilling, and the cycle for this is drill counter bore, and that's what I want, so I'm gonna leave it that way. I'm gonna select finish, then I'm gonna come over here and finish programming this. Just gonna turn some things on. That's good, that's good. This is a 0.1875 diameter hole, and I'm going to put a 15th out chamfer around it. And there we go. Okay. Now we're going to drill. I'm going to select drill again. I'm going to use the copy previous points. My green check mark. I'm going to go grab my drill. And the drill is 0.1875. We're going to bring that in. And I'm going to do that procedure again of editing this tool. Size is OK. My drill chuck is in tool station 20. So all of my drills are either 20 or 25, that's the other drill chuck that I have loaded on this machine. Let's go uh, 800 RPM, two inches a minute, 40 inch or 40 inches per minute for the plunge rate and 200 for the retract. This time I'm gonna set this, I'm gonna set this to chip break and I'm gonna give my peck distance and these are percentage values. So we're gonna go 40%, 40%, Peck clearance of 15 is fine. I don't want to dwell. If you wanted to dwell, you could put it in there, and that's seconds. Um, chip break percentage of diameter 15 is fine. And we're going to select finish. So now in my cut parameters, if I go in there, you can see it's already set to chip break. My peck is already set. I just need to set my linking parameters. We're going to go ahead and set that to zero, that to zero, and let it go. And there we go. So now I've essentially finished this block. I've just programmed it. It's complete. But if I go up here to my tool manager, the lower part of my tool manager is my mill inch tool database. This has all of the, the this is where I grab these tools from, but I've since edited these tools. So what I want to do is I believe I already have a custom tool library created. There's Bob Tools Standard. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. You could create it instead of opening it. So I could create a custom tool library name here. 
And what I'm going to do is just grab these four tools, hit the black arrow. This tool library is now populated with the first four tools. Green check mark that. It asked me to save changes. I'm going to say yes, of course. Well, what's the benefit of that? Well, the benefit of that is the next time I grab this half inch bullnose cutter, my speeds and feeds are done. I don't have to worry about it. That's how fast I run that half inch bullnose that's sticking out as far as that tool is. It's a standard half inch bullnose end mill, and it's always going to run at the same speed. I don't have to, the next time I use this for this contour, for example, when I select that half inch bullnose end mill, my speeds and feeds are down here are correct. I can ignore that. I don't have to pay any attention to that. I can go into my cut parameters, make sure that that's set correctly, my lead in and lead out, my linking parameters. I'll look at those and call those good. Green check mark. And there we go. It's one less thing I have to program, worry about when I program day to day. Just that fast, I've added four tools to a tool library. Took about 10 minutes, 11 minutes um, to program and add those two tools to the tool library. So you can imagine over the course of, say, a week, you're going to come pretty close to populating a library 100%. So whether you set a tool library up in the way that I just showed you, or if you come in and spend a day, maybe two, setting up a tool library completely, programming with those libraries that have the speeds and feeds already set is a, a way to program much more efficiently using Mastercam. Thank you for checking in today. Hope you enjoyed the content. Please don't forget to check back uh, for number two in the series. Creating operation libraries from often used procedures. Thank you.